Archery's brightest stars came to the land of the rising sun. Konnichiwa, and welcome to Tokyo, the most populated city in the world, playing host to the biggest event on the World Cup circuit. This country has long been known as the land of the rising sun, but during the Archery World Cup finals, it also became known as the land of the falling rain. Still, the liquid sunshine served the purpose, forcing everyone, including superstars like Brady Ellison and Albina Loganova, to focus even more on the job at hand. And so they went to work at the 7th Annual World Cup Finals, played out in the serene beauty of Hibia Park, a lush oasis in a bustling metropolis of 30 million, located in the heart of downtown Tokyo, where the devoted fans had the pleasure of watching the best archers on the planet, competing for big trophies, big paychecks, and plain old-fashioned pride. So this time we are here for the World Cup final. After a very intensive season with uh, three stages of World Cup and Olympic Games, we finished the, the season with the World Cup final in Tokyo, in Ibiya Park, in the middle of the city, in the heart of the city. Regarding the challenge, I would say we can have two of them. The first is that we are very late on the season at the end of this. We have Olympic year, so archers make the preparation for August, and we are ready in more or less at end of September. So the challenge will be to be ready. The second challenge is the humidity. This is a very humid and very uh, hot place at this time of the year. So the sweating and the losing of uh, hydration that can affect the performance. Luckily, we have not wind issues this time. We have a very protected environment with uh, trees and buildings. And the typhoons that happen sometime in this part of the world is very much on the north of Japan. So, so far we expect a very good uh, environment, a very good uh, atmosphere for this weekend. A weekend that began with compound competition and Danielle Brown of Great Britain, the Paralympic champion who was stunned when Marcella Tonioli had equipment problems and could not take this critical shot. Knowing that would cost her the match, she still summoned the courage to shoot her final arrow. Though it found the 10 ring, it was not enough to prevent disaster for Marcella. For Danny Brown, it was only the beginning. That wasn't the only surprise in the quarterfinals where Japan's eighth-seeded Honda Yumiko battled top-seed Albina Loganova, who trailed by two after the first six arrows. When she fired an eight on her final shot, the 2010 World Cup gold medalist left the door open for the 53-year-old archer from the host country to pull off the second major upset. That surprising, unlikely turn of events vaulted eight-seated Honda Yumiko into the bronze medal match in Hibiya Park, where she had a lot of support for her showdown with Christy Collin of the United States. Collin came to Japan ranked sixth in the world and was seated third for this tournament. Once again, Honda Yumiko able to hold her own. The match was tied after the first three ends and she only trailed by three after the first 12 arrows. In the fifth and final end, the crowd favorite fired a nine on her first shot. But Christy Collin, planning on returning home to Pennsylvania and devoting more time to her young family, win one better with a ten. Some of the magic Hondo Yumiko had displayed in her showdown with Albina Loganova began to fade as this match drew to an end. Meanwhile, Christy Collin, who had already defeated Laura Longo in the quarterfinals, was finishing strong. Back-to-back -back bullseyes giving the mother of two a six-point cushion with one arrow to go. The wild card from Japan fought to the finish, firing a nine, but that just meant her competitor needed a score of four or better to win, and Christy Collin had enough of a cushion to put this match away, avoid an upset, and capture a bronze medal in what may be her last appearance on the World Cup circuit for some time to come. The final total from Tokyo, Christy Collin 140, Hondo Yumiko 135. The women's gold medal match featured another great American archer, Ohio's Jamie Van Atta, a fifth seed who had already won a shoot-off in the quarterfinals to upset fourth seed 
Christina Berger and came to Tokyo ranked second in the world. Danielle Brown came to Tokyo off her gold medal performance in the Paralympics in London. After her miraculous quarterfinal victory, she conquered Christy Collin in the semifinals by four points and made even more history by earning a spot in the gold medal match, a first for a para-archer. Afflicted with a condition that affects her feet, Brown was still able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jamie Van Atta. Brown was down by one after the first six arrows, trailed by only three points after four ends of this gold medal showdown. Shooting from a seated position, the law school graduate kept herself in the chase by nailing a nine. Her competitive spirit kept her in contention, and when her opponent answered that score with an eight, well, that made things even more interesting. So now it was just a two-point match with two arrows to go, basically anybody's match to win. Staying calm and collected, the pride of the UK came through with another solid shot, as did a very focused Jamie Van Atta, who would make a quick adjustment to her bow before the all-important final shot. Danielle Brown would finish her day with a bang, a bullseye on her last attempt. Or was it the final shot? There was still plenty of pressure on Jamie Van Atta, who had to have a nine to win the match. Nine is what she needed, nine is what she had to have, and nine is what she got. After starting the day by surviving a shoot-off, Jamie Van Atta had just enough in her arsenal to win by one point over the inspiring Danielle Brown and capture a gold medal, not only for herself, but in honor of her father. After missing the trip to last year's World Cup Finals in Turkey, Jamie Van Atta more than made up for lost time. Actually, last year I was the third American to qualify, so I didn't get to go based on the rules. But, um, yeah, I, I've been to uh, five of the seven now, and uh, I've, I've won before, and it's nice to do it again. Now for the men. And the bronze medal match in Tokyo featuring fifth seed Peter Elzinga of the Netherlands, also ranked 12th in the world, Paired up with the pride of Mexico, sixth seed Julio Ricardo Fierro, who was actually ranked a bit higher at seventh in the world. It was all smiles before the shooting began, but this match, well, it got serious in a hurry. After four ends, there was just one point separating these two archers, with Fierro holding the advantage thanks to three bullseyes in the fourth end. Trailing by one, El Zinga on one of the few occasions in this match, winds up outside the 10 ring. Knowing an opportunity when he sees one, the 22-year-old Mexican seizes his chance to put more daylight between himself and his opponent. Fierro on top by two with two to go. El Zinga's a veteran, knows how to respond to pressure. The message, he's not going down without a fight. But Fierro accepts the challenge, matching El Zinga's 10 with a bullseye of his own. The Dutchman does all he can to preserve any hope that's left for a bronze medal. But Fierro about to shut the door, closing out the match with six consecutive shots in the center of a well-worn target. It's a big day for the young man who started off the World Cup season with a silver medal at stage one in Shanghai and brings the season to a close with a bronze medal in Tokyo. And he did it against one of the best in the business, Peter Elzinga. Viva Mexico! One last look at the scoreboard, and it shows you Julio Ricardo Fierro, who will never forget his near-perfect 148 to 146 victory for a World Cup bronze in Japan. On we go to the main event the gold medal match, an All-American affair, featuring the most dominant compound archer of this era. Rio Wild out of Pocatello, Idaho, ranked number one in the world and seeded number one. Rio's been on a roll, winning four straight World Cup stages going back to last year, but he's not the only one in the picture. Brayden Galantine's been right there with Rio and faced him in the finals at stage two in Turkey. This time, though, he'll face him using a bow borrowed from Brayden's girlfriend after breaking his own right before this trip to Tokyo. 
With his dad alongside lending moral support, Gelantine manages to keep things even with Wild. Both men shooting a near-perfect score after the first 12 arrows. Braden missing the 10 ring in the third end, Rio scoring a 9 in the fourth. So heading down the stretch, Rio shoots first and shoots high, proving he's only human. Braden's well aware of the chance he's just been presented, a gift from the gods, but he's not able to take advantage. So the match remains tied with just two shots to go. Gelantine laughing to keep from crying. He's been here before and he knows Real Wild isn't likely to miss another shot the rest of the way. But amazingly enough, with only three seconds left on the clock, Rio shoots another wild shot. This time a bit low and to the left. Mystified, Wild knows he's put his fate in the hands of the man from College Station, Texas. At this time, Braden isn't about to pass up another golden opportunity. He drills the shot just about dead center, and all of a sudden, Gelantine's in the driver's seat. Knowing all that, Real Wild regroups and does what he's done a million times before. His final shot, a bullseye. But is it enough? If Gelantine gets a 10, it's over. A 9, a shoot-off. The 25-year-old Texan in no mood for any more suspense. He ends the drama as he drills a 10 on his final shot and celebrates the biggest win of his career with his proud papa. You know, just to be here was, was wonderful. Uh, the World Cup final is the pinnacle of the event. and. I was, just, I was happy to be in that situation. I was having fun up there. I shot a nine and, you know, it was kind of disappointing. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't a horrible shot. It missed, missed a little bit further than I thought it was going to. But, you know, if, I thought at that point, if I lost 149 to 150, I couldn't really hang my head about it. I just had to keep going and keep shooting tens. Your most difficult competition. Oh my gosh, there are so many. Um, this year's Olympic trials. I Mundial in Torino, the final a squadra. The addition the Olympic qualification. As I lost my bow in the transit in Par Paris, I got that bow after eight days, just before the qualification of the team. One of the most difficult que he tenido fue the Juegos Olympics del, del 2008 in Beijing. My trick to stay focused before a competition. No se puede ir. Se no, será un truco. Hard rock, heavy rock. Mi truco es resetearme, ponerme en cero, eh, analizar qué es lo que estoy haciendo, analizar a dónde quiero llegar, analizar hacia dónde. Dormo tanto. Does size matter in archery? Not really. El tamaño. Uh, Strength makes a difference. Um, size in and of itself, no. And if you say in the body, the Indian team already looks like a wrestler, so. Pues el tamaño del, del potencial, el tamaño del, del triunfo, el tamaño de, de las ganas, yo creo que es lo que más importa en, en el tiro con arco. There's tall arches, short arches, I'm short, and then some are very skinny and some are not, so. I think so long as you're strong and you've got good technique, it doesn't matter. How do you celebrate a victory? No solo celebrar muy explosivo. Sin embargo, en mi mente estoy muy feliz y pues siento que todo lo que he hecho ha valido la pena. Might have a, a glass of wine at home. Con fiesta. Me bebo una birra. From the cue box and back to the firing line. The recurve archers taking center stage on the second day of competition, and they were shooting in the rain all day, including the women's bronze medal match where newlywed Jennifer Nichols came back from a four point deficit and trailed Korea's Choi Hyonju 5 3, heading to the fifth set. In a steady downpour, this sharpshooter from Cheyenne, Wyoming, began that final set needing a solid shot and scoring a very solid nine, giving her hope of winning the set and forcing a shoot off. The 28-year-old Korean seemed willing to comply, answering with an eight. Advantage, Jennifer Nichols, but not for long. Her honeymoon basically ended when she shot a very surprising six, a score that would prove to be the turning point. 
Rejuvenized and seemingly unaffected by the weather, Ms. Choi improved on her first shot, getting back inside the yellow ring. She leaps to a two-point lead over Nichols, who desperately needs to finish with a flourish and does. The bullseye speaking volumes about her strength and spirit. But Ms. Choi need only shoot an eight to tie the set, split the set points, and win the match, and that's exactly what she does. Choi Hyonju, a member of her nation's gold medal team at the Olympic Games in London, takes advantage of the six scored by Jennifer Nichols on the next to last shot of the match, allowing South Korea to claim the bronze by a score of six to four. The downpour continued in the women's gold medal match, a match pitting the second seeded Deepika Kumari of India already victorious over Connie Mickey of Japan and Jennifer Nichols of the USA against top-ranked Kibo Bay of Korea. Kibo Bay had eliminated Lin Xia En and Choi Hyonju to reach this gold medal match. Kibo Bay, of course, rode into Tokyo on the strength of a commanding performance in London where she captured a pair of Olympic gold medals. Surprisingly, though, the 24-year-old Korean found herself trailing Ms. Kumari 4-0 after the first two sets. But as we pick up the action, Kibo Bay has rallied and tied the match at four, going into the fifth set. Deepika Kumari trying to get a good stance on a soggy surface as she straddles the shooting line. She's trying to regain the form that allowed her to win the first two sets. The fifth set, off to a good start for India's finest archer as she records a nine. Her opponent, showing no emotion, looks to take the lead. But this marksman, known for her consistency, surprises everyone with an eight. Alone with her thoughts, she's now at the mercy of Ms. Kumari, who appears poised to put this match in the win column and collect her first gold medal at the World Cup Finals. Her Korean counterpart can still tie up this set with a bullseye, but this nine leaves her trailing by one point, heading for the last shots. If Kumari shoots a 10, the match is over. A nine, then at worst, she's in a shoot-off. But it turns out to be the worst case scenario for Deepika Kumari. A shocking seven on her final shot. A seven that opens the door for the Korean Olympic champion, who only needs an eight to tie and a nine to win. And Kibo Bay of Korea comes through in the clutch. She nails a nine, wins the set, and wins the match on the final shot of her World Cup season. As far as she's concerned, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day in Tokyo. Fate smiling upon the women's top-ranked recurve archer as she starts off slowly, battles back, and then wins this match and the gold medal in dramatic fashion. The final score from Tokyo, 6-4 to four in favor of Korea's Kibo Bay. <laughs> To be the best archer, you need to be strong, determined, be organized. Um, well, sometimes not. Necesita ser uh, disciplined and brave. I need to be uh, a bit more focused and ambicioso. Necesita ser eh, apasionado. Do a bit of meditation. Everyone tells me, but I ignore it. Obviamente, disciplinado. Necesita ser eh, de las mejores personas también. Creo que para hacer El mejor arquero necesita ser sencillo y con una mira muy alta. Do you have a lucky charm? Yes. Not with me though. My son. Mm. No. <laughs> no. I, I go with my own ability. Una, una manita brasileña que, que viene por parte de mi abuela eh, paterna que falleció hace más de ocho años. Además de, de un rosario que, que me regaló mi mamá que son como amuletos de la suerte, amuletos que me, que me ayudan a centrarme y, y me ayudan a, a que las cosas vengan bien hacia mí. You have to make a photo shoot for an archery magazine. Show me. Like this. Oh. That should be... Uh... Mm. 
this. Yo creo que sería algo así con el arco aquí. Agarraron la mano, las flechas del otro y algo así como... O no sé, no, no puse tipo UTM o algo así, no sé. As for the men, Dimitro Rachov came into the quarterfinals with high hopes, only to see them dashed by the daring young Frenchman Gail Prévost. Prévost prevailed in the first set and never looked back, splitting the second set, winning the third, and then closing out this world-class Ukrainian competitor in the fourth and final set. Meanwhile, Mexico's Luis Alvarez impressed everyone with his breakout gold medal performance at Stage 3 in Ogden. But here at his first World Cup Finals, he was no match for Brady Ellison, who was on target right from the very start. Ellison made it a clean sweep in the rain to eliminate Alvarez, who promises to be a major factor in Mexico's future. In the bronze medal match, Im Dong Hyun didn't figure to be as cooperative for Gail Prevost as he had been for Brady Ellison in the semis. Despite a disappointing showing at the Olympics in London, Mr. Im is still regarded as one of the top figures in this sport. The same holds true for Gail Prevost, who had to gain confidence from his 7-1 victory over Dimitro Rachov. Ranked 11th in the world, Prevost came in hoping to improve upon last year's fourth place finish at the World Cup Finals in Istanbul. We'll pick up the action in the fourth set, Prevost leading by the count of 4-2 after winning the first set and the third set of this match. Prevost putting three straight bullseyes on the board in that third set. Meanwhile, Mr. Im shoots first and shoots to the right, coming up with eight points in a situation where he needs to be shooting nines and tens. On the other hand, a very focused Frenchman is going for the kill. Prevost posting his fourth straight ten to gain the advantage in what could be the deciding set. His Korean counterpart comes back, aims a bit better, scores a bit better with a nine. An opportunity for the teenager from France, no doubt. But it's one he does not take full advantage of. Only one point now separates these two men in this set. A set Im Dong Hyun can still win, but he needs to shoot inside the center ring. Instead, it's another nine, a good shot, but a shot that puts Prevost in position to close out the match. Nine or better, and the bronze belongs to the unflinching Frenchman. Prevost does what he has to do, and there's no doubt about it, that nine will work just fine for the young man from France, who now needs only to work on his victory celebration. He gets a bit of coaching in that area, finally breaks a smile, and savors the sweet taste of victory. No fourth place finish this time for Gail Prevost of France, who prevails in the bronze medal match. Finally, we are on to the main event, and two titans going head-to-head -head for the gold medal. Brady Ellison's won gold of the last two World Cup finals and wants to make it three in a row. Meanwhile, his opponent, Kim Woo Jin, did not qualify for Korea's Olympic team in London, so these finals in Tokyo are his Olympics. After four sets, Kim Woo Jin has a 5-3 lead with only three arrows to go. Time for Brady to bear down even more. This is his fourth match of the day and he's drenched, but Ellison comes through in the clutch with a bullseye. Now the ball is in Kim's court and he falls behind in the set by one point. Can Brady Ellison do it again? At this point, he has to go for broke. And bingo, another bullseye. The momentum seems to be shifting as Kim Woo Jin can only counter with another nine on his second shot. And he seems to sense there might be a shoot off coming for him in the very near future. That's not necessarily so since the eight from Ellison creates the very real possibility of Mr. Kim clinching the match if he can come up with a 10 to tie the set, split the set points and get to six points for the victory. He locks, loads, pulls the trigger, but cannot come through. Kim Woo Jin shoots an eight, drops the set, and now there will indeed be a shoot off for the gold medal. If the Korean is concerned, it doesn't show. Both men try to stay loose psychologically and physically, which is no small feat in the cold and relentless rain.
Now tied at 5-all, the reigning World Cup final champion and the man ranked number one in the world will get first crack at the target. Brady Ellison eyes it, Brady Ellison tries it, but Brady Ellison just can't buy the bullseye he was gunning for. So it's out of Ellison's hands now. The outcome resting on the broad shoulders of Kim Woo Jin. Amazingly, he shoots an eight as well, but even to the naked eye, it's apparent Mr. Kim's shot is closer to the center of the target. So the gold goes to Kim Woo Jin, who does know how to strike the pose. Six to five's your final score in the final match of the 2012 Archery World Cup season. The conditions were difficult because of the rain and then the wind picked up, so I expected some problems with the shot, but I did expect to be in the yellow. Goodbye Tokyo, see you next season. Auf Wiedersehen Tokyo, bis zum nächsten Jahr. Arrivederci Tokyo, ci vediamo il prossimo anno. Okay Tokyo, wir sehen uns in der nächsten Saison. Goodbye Tokyo, see you next season. Ciao Tokyo, bis zum nächsten Mal.